Magix has just released a brand new Vegas Movie Studio. Previously I've been demonstrating how to work with the 16s version. This time we're going to have a look at a Movie Studio 17 Platinum. So stay tuned if you wanna know what's new in this version and why this video editor is the best for its price. Also in case you decide to purchase this program, I will appreciate if you do it via my link in the description. This comes at absolutely no cost to you but also supports this channel. This video consists of two parts. The first one is the brief introduction into Movie Studio from a broad perspective. Feel free to skip it if you're already familiar with this product or have worked with Vegas Pro before. I'm going to onboard anyone who is new to Movie Studio, so you will find out the basic info about the user interface and features. The second part covers the new features of the Movie Studio 17 specifically. You are going to like what Magix has prepared for you. I am going to explain and demonstrate every feature of the latest release. Alright, let's move on. So first of all, if you are completely new to Movie Studio, you have to know what it is. This program is a budget version of a professional grade video editor Vegas Pro. And the 17th version is catching up for the Vegas Pro 17 that has already been released a while ago. When someone says a budget version, you may see that as a huge downside. While sometimes it can be true, this is not the case with Movie Studio. This video editor is far beyond any consumer level tool. You can hardly happen to become missing any important features with this program. This of course is assuming you're not looking for a pro level video editor. In that case, you will have to choose either Vegas Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro. In just about every aspect Vegas Movie Studio looks and feels the same as its older brother the Vegas Pro. Except Movie Studio may seem easier to get started with for the inexperienced users. Now let's have a look at the program itself. The welcome screen allows you to either create a new project or open an existing one. Amazingly Magix has included a short but comprehensive example project that you can use to discover what this editor is capable of, as well as learn how to implement a specific effect or transition. We're not going to be covering the example project, as it's better to let you have a look at it once you've installed the movie studio. When you want to create a new project, you can select the orientation of the resulting video. By default, the HD aspect ratio is selected. This is suitable for any sorts of videos including YouTube and Vimeo. Another orientation or aspect ratio is the video for smartphones or mobile social networks. This is called the tall video. We are going to choose the default widescreen and click power user mode. This mode gives access to all the features. Keep in mind, when you create a new project, edit it and save, on the next Movie Studio launch, this project is going to be opened by default. Now let's see what UI elements are in Movie Studio. On the left top you can see different steps of video creation process. You will usually start with the Add Arrange Media to import some videos, images and sounds. After that, depending on your needs, you will either be adding graphic elements, including texts and titles, adding the transitions between clips or applying video effects. The final step would be to make a movie, that is to render your project. As you can see we have three items grayed out, as they are not active unless we have some media on a timeline. Let me just quickly import some files into a project media. I've already prepared some media files and just going to add them to the movie studio. When importing the videos, Movie Studio is going to ask you if you want to adjust the project settings to match the format of the first video on the list. We will click yes. I don't know why the program switches itself into a guided mode when adding the media. We are just going to select the power mode again. Now the media is added into the project and also automatically placed on the timeline. The next part of this program is the timeline. Most of the editing is done in this area. The best part is you can create as many audio and video tracks as you want via the context menu. We can move the clips in the timeline. We can change the duration by dragging the edges of every media. Also we can create a simple fade in transition between two clips if we try to overlap them in the movement.
if you want to cut the video, simply place the playhead where you want a cut to be and uh, then either right click on a timeline and select split or simply or just press the S button on your keyboard. Keep in mind that the clip that you want to be split it must be selected. The next UI element is the transitions tab. You can add any of the existing transitions from this tab into the timeline. Let's try and do this right now. And this time this will be the additive dissolve transition. Let's move it in between these two clips. Let's close this window for now and let's increase the duration of the transition a little bit. Now let's play and see how it looks. Excellent, it works. Now let's see what we got in the video effects tab. Here we can find all the effects that can be applied to any clip. Let's try and apply one of the effects. And this time this is going to be the noise effect. Uh, let's search in this text box here. And this is going to be the grainy noise. Let's add it into this clip and increase the level of the noise. You can see it right away here, right away here in the preview window. Let's play it and excellent, it works just fine. Now let's go to the media generators tab. Inside this tab we have a bunch of software generated media elements. And the easiest ones to start with is the titles and text. Now let's try to move one of these texts into our timeline. Let's choose this one, title 17. Place it into the timeline, into the text track here. We can also change the, the text itself. Let's put something like demo text. And let's hit play. Let's place the playhead at the beginning and hit play. As you can see, the text is working. Excellent. Another UI element of the Movie Studio 17 Platinum is the preview window, where you can see how your project looks while editing. I think it has become obvious for you what this window does. The quality of the preview window can be controlled via this drop down here. In my case, it's better to set it into quarter because my graphics card is pretty old, but I want to have as smooth as possible editing experience. On the right from the preview window, there is a master volume control. It controls the sound level of the entire project. By the way, how about adding some background music to our project? Let's add a music file real quick. This time I'm going to show you how to directly place a media file from your explorer into a timeline. This is a really cool feature. All you need to do is just to drag the audio file and place it into the timeline here. You can edit audio track in a similar fashion as the video one. It is possible to cut it Change the duration by dragging the edges. Add the fade in effect using the mouse. And apply the audio effects after clicking the F icon on the audio clip. Before we move on to the new features of version 17, I just wanted to explain you how the effects chain works in Movie Studio. Let's do it real quick. So, every video clip in the timeline has this F button in the right top corner. When you click it, if there are no effects added to that clip yet, you will have an effect selection window opened. Let's add one effect and click OK. Now you can see we have this effect added after the default pan and crop effect. If you click this F plus button, you can add another effect.
While adding new effects, they are going to be combined into an effects chain as you can see. You can also remove any effect from the chain by selecting it and clicking the F cross button. Alright, this is it for the basics of Movie Studio. Now let's head over to the new features of version 17. So, what's new in Movie Studio Platinum 17? First of all, take a look at how much better the effects, transitions and other building blocks are organized in the UI. The new powerful management makes it much easier to work with them. Every building block has its dedicated tab and inside this tab you can also filter them by category. This is something that I was really missing in the previous movie studio. Another cool feature in version 17 is the warp flow transition. I am just going to drag it from the transitions tab and drop it in between these two clips. Also, let's make this transition a little bit longer, so we can see how it looks. Let's play it. Ok, my machine is pretty slow, but I hope you got the idea. Ok, so next feature is a unified color grading workflow. If you press LG on the keyboard, this widget with four color wheels will appear in the bottom of the screen. First, you are going to need to select a video clip on the timeline. Then, you can use these color wheels, the knobs inside these color wheels, to adjust the color style of the selected clip. You can create some cool effects with this feature. You can also use the color curves here and also adjust the color theme. Overall, it's a very powerful pro feature and it's so amazing to have access to it in a consumer level program like this. I'm going to press the LG again on the keyboard to hide the color gradient widget. Another new feature in Movie Studio Platinum 17 is enhanced animated text. If you go to the media generator tab and go into a titles and text category, you can see we have 25 new titles added here. All these titles from title 01 to title 25, they are new titles. You can apply every title by dragging and dropping it on the timeline. Let's play it and see how it looks. Awesome, the animation is working. Also, you can preview every animation if you just hover your mouse over any of the title. Movie Studio 17 also includes a new way to create a slow motion effect. Previously, you could create a slow motion effect by simply dragging the mouse and holding the control key. Like this. Now there is a new way to create a slow motion effect. If you go into Video Effects tab, you can select a slow motion here. You just need to drag it and drop into a clip. Now you will need to click the Analyze button. And depending on how powerful your machine is, it's going to take more or less time. I'm not going to be demonstrating this feature now as my computer is pretty dated, but I think you got the idea. Now let's close it. And the next new feature in the version 17 is the black bar filter. Let's say you have a video that has a different aspect ratio than your monitor. This would result in black bars when playing it back. You can fix it by applying the black bar filter. Let's try it with the 4K video. Let me first import it. I have prepared this 4K video here. And when I play it, you can see the black bars here on the bottom and on the top. Let me fix it real quick by applying the black bar filter. Black bar fill, actually it's called black bar fill filter. Let me apply it into this clip. And let's play it back again. As you can see now, the black bars are filled with the green color. 
and here the, they are filled with the white color. You can adjust the level of shadow blur here, the scale, and just blur. You can play around with these options to achieve the desired look. But now you, now you can see it looks much better. One more new cool effect is the lens correction. Simply apply it like any other effect. And play around with it. You can see we can create some cool looking lens effects. You can also select the lens model here. All right. Besides the new effects, one small addition is the edge handles on every clip. This makes it much easier to start dragging the start and end of the clip. Another small addition is the project location memory. This feature would set the playhead in the position where it was last saved when closing the project. It may save time trying to remember where you left. If you're an owner of one of the latest graphics cards, you will enjoy how much faster the rendering and sometimes editing would be thanks to a complete AMD, NVIDIA and QSV hardware acceleration added into Movie Studio 17. So that's it for the new features. In my opinion, the new stuff is really amazing and useful. Kindly let me know what you think about it in the comment section. To conclude with this video, I must say, Movie Studio is one of the easiest video editors I've ever used, with all that cool advanced stuff inside. This program is very reliable and does not seem to crash whatever you do with it, given you've got sufficient hardware resources. Having that said, even the low-budget computer like my 3rd gen Core i5 is able to run it. This is often not the case with the modern video editors. Movie Studio 17 is a very good and capable video editor for a hilarious price of less than $100. It looks and feels like it's Vegas Pro. The only difference is a much lower price and some missing effects that you will almost never need. Don't forget to like this video so others can see it too. Also, feel free to check the link to this product in the description down below. Thanks for watching and see you soon.